um so we were talking about cast uh, a little while back and let's i guess let's just circle back to it um as you have talked about in in your sort of videos as well um that many many people perhaps who i don't know if they still call themselves hindu or perhaps they associate even if they don't call themselves hindu they're subconsciously associating themselves in a lot of sort of hindu like activities perhaps um so they would say yeah sure i'm i'm like Uh, so i'm a brahmin but i i don't believe in the caste system or something of those sorts can you can you talk can you little can you talk a little bit about that because there is often um this misconception that people still have that they still perhaps find pride in their caste identity yet saying that they're not casteist in some sense yeah. can you sort of disentangle that because i think that's quite important um just for the individuals to sort of grapple with really i think if someone is saying i am brahmin but i don't believe in the caste system they should know that if you're saying that you are a brahmin you believe in the caste system because we did not believe in the caste system you would not be a brahmin right but then there's another thing to keep in mind which is that a lot of us are never allowed to look past our caste based lens because our families bring us up on the idea that we are superior to other people because of our caste so you appear to be an upper caste individual i appear to be an upper caste individual we have been brought up in families which lie to us essentially because they have also been lied to by the brahmanical system which is about our uh, superior status in society so when someone says that i don't believe in the caste system uh, they are kind of superficially doing it because that's the flavor of the day and age nobody will actually unless you are a super regressive monster you will not say i believe in the caste system the caste system is right these people are inferior to me mm-hmm. if you're a reasonably uh, you know a, a well educated urban individual you will say i don't believe the caste system should exist but the real test of that is not that sentiment it's very easy to say that the real test of it is do you recognize how much power and privilege you have in society because of your caste like you know we talk about punching up and punching down as comedians you can't understand which direction to punch in unless you know where you are right you'll punch someone but they will probably be below you mm-hmm. right so people don't realize their own caste privilege there are entire uh, groups of entertainers composed completely of brahmins or upper caste individuals and they think that they are you know social justice warriors <laughs> when not one word has ever come out of any of them about the caste system yeah. so uh, i i hear this in so many people like some one of the most funniest things i hear in india is I am a journalist. Journalist का कोई काश नहीं होता. I am a comedian. Comedian का कोई काश नहीं होता. I am a politician. Politician का कोई काश नहीं था. भैया सबका काश होता है. तुम्हारा काश है. तुम्हें पता नहीं है या तुम जानबूझ के छुपाना चाहते हो. That's a different matter. <laughs> But caste denial takes the form of this also. Yeah. And uh, it's a problem. And I could see it for myself if I just if I just have to sort of share. So I recently I mentioned this on the podcast as well. I had this good opportunity to sort of volunteer um, in this small village in Madhya Pradesh, and that's where the so I am let's say a Savarna. So I am let's say uh, from let's say the Banya caste, even mm. though I don't want to associate with that. But for example, just for 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 common sakes. Um, but yeah, and that was the first time when I sort of went to the village. I was interacting with people at the village and the kids in the village. The, this was a particular school that I was sort of volunteering at, and uh, yeah, I I was just shocked at the sort of frequency that this question was sort of asked to me ki acha bhaiya which caste do you belong to or something mm-hmm. of that sort and it was just normal place for them in some sense and that's where it struck to me ki acha like what the the yeah, yeah, yeah. things are they they shoot that gun shamelessly we put yeah. a silencer on it ha huh. we like still it, do huh. it right like yeah. when 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 uh, a, a an upper caste person tries to find a groom for their daughter or son they will still check all the caste markers they will still discriminate against people from caste in a workplace they will still give if not actively discriminate they will still give preference to people from upper, upper caste mm-hmm. but they will never openly say that i am casteist so these a lot of these things like there are there is significant amount of, amount of casteism in academia there is practically an epidemic of suicide among dalit students and academic and scholars because they get bullied in uh, universities yeah. nobody talks about it except them And Rohit, I think there was a famous Rohit Verma case. Yeah, 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 yeah. And there have been cases every year. There have been. There, I think there was a case a week ago also. Oh wow! Okay. There was a student who was uh, uh, who has died by suicide. There was a suicide note, and that suicide note is not being made public, and the police is making it about. I'm forgetting the name entirely. Oh wow! But mm-hmm. I think this happened somewhere. Uh, I shouldn't guess. It happened somewhere in India. Okay. and uh, the police is trying to make it the, about the police is saying that she died uh, she uh, died by suicide because 
she was lonely and they are not paying attention to the caste aspect of it at all and the family is fighting about it yeah and as you were saying as well so that when i talked about the whole aspect in the village so that's more let's say in explicit terms so they are asking me about it yeah. and he, i don't know if they can if their sort of intention was malicious or whatever it may be maybe just out of general curiosity or maybe they don't really understand the wider i don't know the ramifications of it or whatever but as you said in metro cities it's a lot more implicit or it's it's a, it's a lot more sort of like um yeah it's not it's a lot more implicit so for example why is it that um the people who sort of help you in in for example with domestic help that come to your house why are they of a certain yeah. um uh, community or yeah. for example why are sanitation you, workers always from a certain huh. community or yeah. if you drive down let's say lutians we have Bay, just are, we have just put uniforms and uh, exactly. name huh. tags on the system and i don't think we should even call it implicit or people are not aware of it everyone is aware of the hmm. fact that they're looking for the same caste groom for their daughter right everyone is aware that they're looking for a same caste bride for their son everyone is aware of it we just don't want to talk about it because it's uncomfortable for our urban sensibilities and i think we should talk about it more we should give the platform to the people who are oppressed by us and we should brace for the impact that their conversations are going to bring us because it's not going to be easy if someone has never done this in their life it's not going to be easy Yeah. you are going to get called an oppressor and you are going to have to listen to it we are going to have to listen to it there is no other way if we want to be comfortable then we are not going to be able to do this something else that i've sort of heard you talk about and i don't know if i entirely agree with it is something so you've often talked key for example if we are let's say savarnas mm-hmm. and we've had all this uh, privilege that we've been brought up with and we still sort of have that privilege whenever we walk in indian society and things of that sort um but i think you've sort of mentioned this that um it may not always be the right thing for you for savarnas to sort of talk about caste or talk or sort of um talk about these issues on let's say a public landscape uh, on a public mm-hmm. platform because that inherently is perhaps casteist or that perhaps that is inherently again um not not sort of um getting at the roots of the issue because you said ki um it has to be people or it has to be individuals who are from that particular community or who have been oppressed that should be mm. having their voices out yeah i have right. not said that savarna should not do it okay. i have said that savarna anti caste activism cannot happen in the absence of people from the backward so called backward community because okay. then it becomes yet another example of us taking over spaces that are not ours right it is very easy for a savarna commentator to write books about casteism mm-hmm. get applause from other savarna people have that book praised internationally oh wow such a woke individual who wrote a ca- anti caste book etc while several publications entirely run by dalit individuals are uh, desperately trying to make a living because their books are not selling Mm-hmm. right so this this space where we talk about caste has to be mostly the voices of those who have been marginalized like the other day someone came and said that uh, uh, you know why do you think uh, transphobic jokes are not funny i have done my research and i find it funny and uh, i don't know of anyone who does not find them funny and i said have you have you asked a trans person he said no therein lies the problem Mm-hmm. we create a bubble where people like us exist we talk about a thing we shake our heads we get really happy that we are so aware of things and we have never ever heard a word from them they might actually look at you in disgust because they they think of you as a hypocrite they think mm-hmm. of you as you know yeah he's saying all the right things but he's doing it because he wants to uh, look woke or look progressive etc but in his everyday life in his conduct in his uh, uh in his even in his attempts to f- supposedly solve this problem there is no sign of anything right yeah. so that's why i said i don't say that you and i should not talk about caste but our conversations should primarily be not towards the uh, pointed at the dalit community it should be pointed at our people we need to explain to them what we are mm-hmm. doing wrong we should be the vibhishan of this <laughs> right we should tell ravan what he's doing wrong Yeah. and uh, that's a bad example because i took it from another savarna text ramayan <laughs> but it's a, just an example just an example aryan invader ram yeah 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 so no no aryan invader ram uh, i think oh. that there are there are uh, hindu brahmins who will say that ravan was a brahmin yeah right so there is a bit of a mix there mm-hmm. but it was just the first example that came to my mind i'm saying Fair that enough. when we talk about caste we should give primacy see that's a limitation of the voices of people who have been oppressed 
that's the limitation of our upbringing right yeah, like, yeah exactly. when we think of example it's the it's it's the sort of text yeah that sort yeah. of give up uh, supremacy to our caste based identities and caste based literature and things like that yes yeah 